Uther has become a bit of a powerhouse in Heroes of the Storm. He is one of the most contested supports in the game, but despite this, he has about a 50% win rate, give or take. Tyrael is also one of the more complex tanks, with high damage and by far one of the more unique tanks out there. With about a 50% win rate as well, Tyrael is also a well-known force to be fearful of, if played correctly. Regardless of that factor, if anyone here watched the Heroes of the Storm World Championship 2015, they would have known that Uther had either a 100% pick or ban rate. So why is this? What makes Uther so much better than any other hero or support? Well, if you've seen my previous videos, you would have known that I made a video about the problems I had with Uther and Tyrael. I mentioned that they are my favorite heroes and they are very good, however their traits are problematic. Both of their traits can only be activated when they die, which means if you are a good player and don't die at all, that makes no use for your trait. What this means is that if you are a professional player and you need to make the most of every factor, you'd be less inclined to choose Uther and or Tyrael because you would never use their traits. I estimated that Tyrael and Uther would fall off the tier list and never be picked in high ranked games, and pretty much everyone agreed with me. However, the complete opposite happened. Tyrael and Uther were the most powerful picks in MLG. As I said before, Uther had a 100% pick or ban rate. And Tyrael had a 100% win rate with 13 wins and 15 bans throughout all of the series. So why was that the case? Why, despite their traits that would seem very unappealing to professional players, would they still be picked and have such statistics? Well, let's start off with Uther. Uther is one of the more unique supports, due to the fact that he is one of the only two supports to have a stun for starters. The other support that has a stun is Tyrande. This allows Uther to cause disruption where other supports could not. He can interrupt important enemy spells and in general cause chaos where other supports simply sit in the backline and heal from time to time. Granted, Brightwing has a similar ability with her Polymorph, which does interrupt, but the enemy can still walk freely. Next up is his Holy Light spell, which is a powerful heal. Uther is not the best support at sustained heals, in fact he's probably one of the worst for that, but he has by far the best at burst heals. When an enemy team decides to burst an allied hero down, the Holy Light can be the difference between life and death. Not only that, but with the talent Bendiction, he can also heal the target twice in two seconds. Next up we have his trait, which despite what I said in my previous video, is somewhat better than it may seem. Once Uther dies, he can then become a sustained healer, dishing out flashes of lights every few seconds. This helps serve as a major deterrent to killing him. In the previous video, I said that most people would probably disregard his trait and kill him anyway, which is true in quick match, but not the case in professional games. Turns out, in a team fight, killing Uther can then cause more damage than good. The only case where this is not true is if the enemy team can kill Uther before he can get off most or all of his abilities, and especially his heroic ability. So, against what I said before, Uther is indeed a low priority to kill in teamfights due to his trait. Uther operates like a stink bug or a cane toad, but unlike a cane toad, when you play Uther, you should have some life preservation. Even if Uther is the most clear target and easy to get to, he is not the priority. And I have to say, this is really impressive. I have played a lot of MOBAs for many years, from Dota 1, League of Legends, to now Heroes of the Storm, and I have never seen a mechanic like this before. A hero that you don't want to kill. A hero that will do more damage to your team if you kill him over than if you leave him alive. This concept also works for Tyrael. Now it may seem a bit overpowered the way I'm portraying it, but it does have its drawbacks. Like I said before, your trait is useless when you're alive, essentially making you a traitless hero, which is a major downside. Also, when I'm talking about how amazing these traits are, it's mainly aimed at MLG and not just normal ranked or quick matches. In the MLG, many more calculations and efforts are put into working out the pros and cons of each individual move, of each individual hero, each individual trait, and each individual talent for each given situation that they are probably going to encounter. These traits are only overpowered if played correctly. Like I said, you can't just go full cane toad and just stand in the center of the road waiting for a car to hit you, or in this case, the enemy team. If the enemy team kills the Uther and or Tyrael before they can use their moves, it's a useless trait. If the enemy team ganks you and you have no one to heal, it's a useless trait. If the enemy team is fast enough to run out of Tyrael's nuke explosion, 
your trait is useless. Lastly for Uther, we have the coup de gras. The one thing that I think sets Uther apart from any other hero, except Uriel. Divine Shield. This move is the core to Uther and the enemy team's nightmare. So why is that? The general idea of it is that it causes the enemy team to panic and their strategy to fail. Normally in a game, the enemy team will all focus on one hero at the same time. If that hero is then protected by Uther's Divine Shield, the enemy team will go into disarray as they need that target dead in order to win the team fight. It works in several ways. The enemy team can use all of their moves, including heroic abilities, in an attempt to kill the enemy hero. If the Divine Shield is then put onto that hero, the enemy team now has wasted all of their cooldowns trying to kill a hero only to fail. This puts the enemy team in a huge disadvantage for the fight. The Divine Shield also works as a way to completely destroy team structure. While the team was focused on one hero and worked together in an attempt to kill said hero, when that backfires and they can no longer target said hero, the team is baffled and doesn't know what to do. Panic can start to spread and all five members of the team are all focusing on different targets and ultimately ending up in no kills and a defeat. The Divine Shield works as a move that disrupts order and strategy in a team. It is very game changing when it is cast on the right ally on the right time. Now, although Uther looks like the best hero in the game due to his 100% pick rate and dissecting some of his moves, in the MLG he was not as good as everyone hoped for. Uther was in a total of 24 games, but despite how contested he was, he only won 9, which means that he was in 15 defeats, giving him a 38% win rate in the MLG. This is a very strange statistic. Despite being the most sought after hero, he only has a 38% win rate. Regardless of that, he is still a powerful pick. Meanwhile, we have Tyrael, who was in a total of 13 games and won all of them, making him have a 100% win rate and in 85% of all games in the MLG. So, why Tyrael? Well, to be honest, I don't really know. I like playing as Tyrael. He's a good hero, but I can't really see anything about him that makes him a must-have or a guaranteed win. However, I'll try to see if I can figure it out. From what I could understand while watching the MLG matches, in most games Tyrael would serve as an off tank or bruiser. He has high damage, high health, and very good utility for the frontline hero. His Q is good for both closing the gap, escaping, and body blocking enemies. His W allows him to shield his entire team, which is a very powerful move for a tank. His E deals mediocre damage to enemies and gives allies who contact it increased movement speed to either escape or close the gap. I think a major factor about Tyrael is that he is the jack of all trades. Nearly all of his moves have two effects that can both aid in killing the enemy team and helping his own team's survival. He is a tank that has high damage, high mobility, higher than average health and also works as a utility support that can help his allies survive and dominate. I also noticed his heroic ability, Sanctification, was also the core to this. This move works exactly like Uther's Divine Shield, but is an AoE instead of single target. This move can be just as impactful, if not more impactful, than Uther's ult. If Tyrael uses this move at the right time, he can prevent a massive amount of damage being caused to all of his allies, drastically increasing the chances that they will win. Both these heroic abilities work as negating effects. If you can completely negate the enemy team's burst or the peak of their damage, your team's chances of winning are very high. But like I said before, I don't fully know why Tyrael was so good in the MLG. Regardless of that, I am very happy to see that both of my preferred heroes are being selected in the championship and that they remain viable. Well, thanks for watching guys, like if you like this video, let me know in the comments what you think of Tyrael and Uther and why they are so overpowered, and if you really like what I have to offer, consider subscribing. Have a good one.